Hello, this is Glenn Yancey with InSource Solutions. In this video, I'm going to be covering a concept called the history blocks inside of the Wonderwear Historian and discuss their locations. The purpose of this video is to give you a better understanding of what history blocks are, how they're created, and where do they get stored. In this picture below, we see the system management console of the Wonderware Historian, and we can see where do we define the locations where our history blocks will reside. So first to understand how the Wonderware Historian is different than a traditional relational database is that the Wonderware Historian does not store its historical values inside of the database. However, it creates a concept called history blocks. So first, the data comes from its data sources, such as InTouch or System Platform. It gets acquired. Once the data is acquired, then the storage mechanism takes over and says, how will I store this data? Will this data be stored on an interval, which we call cyclic? Will this data be stored on change, which we call delta? Or will we store everything that is being acquired? which we call forced storage. After the data is placed into the storage mechanism, it then gets sent to the history blocks, which are files that are outside of the database. But these files are highly compressed, therefore saving you hard drive space. When a history block gets created, it will contain the following naming convention. It will start off with the letter A, and then have the date in there with the year, the month, and the day. Then afterwards, it will be followed by the block number. Now it is possible to have one history block created per day, but there are settings to say, perhaps create a history block every six hours rather than every 24 hours. Or if the history block gets greater than a certain file size, go ahead and create another history block for me. So that block number may go up to number two versus one, as we see here in the picture. Now, as we look on the right, all of our history blocks are placed in a folder called the circular folder. We can choose upon installation what drive that circular folder will be placed on, whether or not it's the C drive or the D drive or whatever drive that you choose. Inside of each history block on the right, you will see a bunch of files that represent the actual values. You will see a bunch of files that represent the data types and some other file formats that are proprietary. So when you do back up your Wonderware Historian, not only do you back up the runtime database that contains your configuration information, you're also going to back up your history blocks and the locations where they reside. So here are the four locations by default your history blocks always go into the circular directory. Once they are in your circular directory, it is possible that there could be a mechanism to perform automatic deletion, depending on how much hard drive space you have or how old the data could be. And when it hits that limit, you choose whether or not it will go into oblivion or perhaps you can cascade that into the alternate directory, which is a second location that says, for the older data that was in the circular directory, for any new data that comes in and pushes that old data out, that old history block, then let me define a separate alternate directory for just that. This drive should always be a different drive than your circular. Never have your alternate and circular directory on the same machine. In the picture below, you'll see a circular directory and an alternate directory. By default, your alternate directory is not defined. It will have a placeholder there instead, noted by the RR colon backslash overflow data. There are two other directories. One is called buffer. The buffer is typically meant for you to put a history block that you may have archived that is not currently being scanned by the system, but you've taken it from a backup and you need to look at the data for that specific day. Let's just say, January 15th, 2011. At this point, your historian is not looking for that day. But as soon as you place that history block in that folder called buffer, it will then scan that history block and make it available for you to trend it or query that data for just that day. 
The permanent directory is very similar to the buffer in that you have to manually place a history block there. However, the history blocks you place in permanent should always stay there. They're not there temporarily. Now for both buffer and permanent, as I mentioned before, there was an, an automatic way of deleting your history blocks based on age or hard drive space. That mechanism does not take effect to any history blocks placed in buffer, nor do they affect any history blocks that are in your permanent directory. So here's an example. I have four history blocks in my circular. And hypothetically, I have an age threshold that says, after four days, delete the oldest history block. So a new history block is created for August 31st, 2011. That forces the other history block, the oldest history block, to be sent into oblivion. And the oblivion is represented by the shark below. So that history block is gone. Unless you have a backup, it's gone. So there are different ways that you could set up automatic deletion of your history blocks. Again, by age, by deletion threshold that says how much hard drive space do you have left. And when I hit that amount of hard drive space left, then start to delete my history blocks. Another one could be the maximum size threshold. If my history block gets too large, then perhaps I'd like to place that history block into oblivion. That's probably not the best example, but it will make sense on the next slide. So if you had an alternate directory defined, what happens is any one of these mechanisms that causes your history block to have been deleted, then cascade into the alternate directory, therefore not getting deleted while it's there. But you do have to keep in mind that the alternate directory could also have a deletion threshold that says if I have a gig worth of hard drive space left, then start deleting that old data. There's nothing for it to cascade into. So the oblivion is represented by that shark. It could leave the alternate directory. So it's recommended that your alternate directory number one is not on the same drive as your circular drive. And number two, that you have a lot of hard drive space left to hopefully never get you into that point. And that you also have good backup practices. Thank you for watching this video on history blocks and where they are located. Stay tuned for more videos on the Wonderware Historian and History Blocks.